see somebody eat some clothing. <laughs> well, someday, maybe in my hotel room when no one's not looking. But <laughs> not on air. What is going on here? <laughs> I don't what know. What is happening? Let's talk about Hannah Murrah, though. Let's <laughs> talk about Hannah Murrah. Gone over time. And they've looked stronger. Just it seems like they've put more time in on it. And one thing I think is worth noting here, too, is that assault maps, they are more variable, right? Where you only need the one good team fight to take a point. So there is the possibility that if Misfits isn't bringing their A game across the board here, Bazooka Puppies could surprise them. Yeah, uh, especially with the different types of compositions that they like to run and whatnot. But Misfits are going to be sticking with, again, this sort of dive composition. And no surprises there. They've got Zupe on the Anna's Eversight on the Zenyatta. So we are be sticking with this no Lucio composition. The downside to it means that you don't have a Lucio to peel for your back lines. And you're really going to be quite susceptible to dive. So Bazooka Puppies, if they can exploit that, Moving into this first checkpoint, they're going to be on for a winner. But other than that, Misfits have been playing a, a lot more fluidly compared to Bazooka Puppies. So Bazooka Puppies right now beginning their approach. Not deep diving here early on. In fact, giving a lot of respect to the Misfits defense. But now, Ube moving in. Bazooka Puppies are going to take this right approach. But instead of going to the high ground, they there dive in and they find Zupe. That is what you need to do because they don't have the Lucius appeal. However, it seems that Misfits have actually managed to equalize this one out. Ube tries to switch strike his way out of there. At the same time, going to be going for these supports, but he's brought down to a T. But that is the sort of basic idea that Bazooka Puppies need to go for. They need to be diving for both Zupe and Zebesai and try and catch them out, because if Madison's not there, if Swoosh isn't there, it's going to be easy kills for them. It's just that they, they did sort of overextend to a degree. I did like the idea from that attack to Bazooka Puppies, because the standard way is that most teams will play is that they go to the right and then they go to the high yeah, ground. Yeah. That's why Zupe was caught off guard. Zupe just thought, all right, they're going up, and no, they shifted and went for him. The downside to that is that Misfits punished, but now they're going for a similar approach here again, but this time Ooh, they're going to the high ground. Now, Bargainer is going to delay a lot of push for the time being, but it is going to wear off, but rightfully mentioned there, ZP. You know, they're now going for this traditional push that most teams go for on Hanamura, where they take the high ground through this building area. The question is now, because they've wasted so much time with this initial push, the Misfits have built up an, a bit of a superior alt economy, and now they have Zebersize Transcendence, but this post one by Logix will delay them even further. Losing Rubicon is not great. And now Bazooka Puppies, they just go all in, right? You don't want to sit up here with five people and eventually get poked down. That's why you saw Ube dive, but now actually they might be waiting a little bit longer. I mean, Perhaps it's waiting for the respawn to get in, but they also could just get picked apart and waste a lot of time. But now they, they commit. They use the sound barrier, they're in, and they find Swoosh. This might work out in their favor. Ube with the Dragon Blade is going to try and make it work, but the Nano Blade from Devic is far more superior as he cuts down Ube in a flash. Now, that was super questionable from Bazooka Puppies from my point of view, because Rubicon getting picked off early meant that he couldn't rejoin the rest of his team. So Bazooka Puppies sticking in the high ground meant that they were just taking out fight 5v6, and the fact that they committed the sound barrier as well on top of it, really just going all out, really confusing plays. So on a micro level, I think they thought they had an opportunity to kill Swoosh. He was getting a little bit low, and they go, okay, let's go in. They got swoosh, but they didn't. Un they sort of underestimated what misfits could throw at them in return. But now Bazooka Puppies, they go straight up the gut. They're not going for high ground. They just want to get onto a point, and they back it up with the Transcendence. Transcendence was used relatively early there. The self destruct as well. Not a great one coming out from the side of misfits, but we'll be doing enough to sort of stall them out for the time being. And now we see as well the kill is going to be trading out quite evenly. Post one by Sharp, I believe, did connect, but not enough damage to really get the job done there. But he's still swoosh falling incredibly low. Will leap his way up <laughs> into the sky. Is finally going to be brought down here. The primal rage committed by Meza as well in the final moments means that Bazooka Puppies most likely going to be the winners in this engagement. Bazooka Puppies looking to put themselves on top. I would still be hesitant to declare victory while Logix is still around. We've seen him just do miraculous things, but the odds are pretty heavily against him here as he just gets cut down by Ube. Still though, Bazooka Puppies, this is a slow attack, and conversely, it's a very good defense by Misfits. You just burned a lot of time off the clock. Yeah, now as well, Tavik has a Dragon Blade to work with. The side of Bazooka Puppies do not have any defensive support ults to negate this one, apart from Psycho Off, he's about 10% away. The question is, you know, Bazooka Puppies, they don't want to waste any time. They're going to be going straight down through the main area right now, looking for opportunities, but unfortunately they're going to be losing players off the back of that one. And immediately, look at this, they make the decision. They have to reset this one out because they've lost too many players already. Mete right now just saying, please let me dive into the pit. And that's exactly what he's going to do there. But now we head into the second phase of Hanamura, which is how do you get an early pickoff and snowball things in your favor? I don't really expect them to stay on the Genji here for too long. Ube's going to stay on it for now because he has the blade. But if their blade attack doesn't work, you would expect him to go to 76 just because of how good 76 is at applying pressure when you have an advantage here on Hanamura last. Yeah. 
So I completely agree with the 76 pick because you can basically stick onto the high ground behind and, and pressure quite lightly. But right now the game plan for Bazooka Puppies is going to be trying to force out that transcendence from Zebesai. If you can get that out early, it gives Ube an opportunity with the Dragon Blade to really do some damage and, and put in a bit of work. But Misfits are playing this quite elegantly as it stands. They're not really committing too hard, just poking and prodding, keeping them off. And Logic's basically buying him enough time to get these Pulse Bomb kills means that it's going to be beautiful for them. And Logic just shuts that push down immediately, yeah. delays Bazooka Puppies even more. And one thing that I think is interesting here, just in terms of hero swaps, is that Ube is sort of dealing with something interesting here, where even though a lot of people would put 76 over a Genji in the situation, he doesn't want to swap off Genji until he gets to use his Dragon Blade. But anytime you can delay Bazooka Puppies like that, you keep him on the Genji. However, Bren, Bazooka Puppies, this is their window. They have everything up. This next fight will be explosive as they're taking the alternate approach coming in here from the left. Six ults online. They choose to initiate in with the Samara. Unfortunately, Ube didn't actually get connected on right now, but we're going to see it unleashed regardless of that. Zupe immediately going to be brought down there by the side of Sharp. The Dragon Blade by Tavik not really getting maximum value out of it, but he will get a single kill off the back of it. Now, see Ube also going to be unleashing his own blade pretty much early on, but again, he didn't get anything from it. Still, the question is, can they still win this one out? The South Destruct is going to be forcing them off the point. And the more time that Misfits buy right now, the better it's going to be for them because the respawns are coming in. They're going to be trying to stagger this one out. Ultimates are being committed here by Bazooka Puppies, but they lose the team fight. And as a result, they've got nothing to work with for the follow-up push. So my question to you, ZP, is now that it's inconceivable that Bazooka Puppies is going to be taking this next team fight, what Japanese memorabilia do you own? Oh, I have Cowboy Bebop DVDs. That's respectable. Okay, yes. I actually rate that, to be <laughs> honest. I rate that quite highly. All right, so here's what you're seeing here. Ube now off the Genji, that push failed. The reason why they went up the left side is that it's more divey, right, when you're wearing the Genji. You just want to get in their face, but they might actually be looking to do this again, but it's weird because as a soldier, he's going to have to back up the other way and go to the middle. So expect Ube to split off a bit here while he looks for positioning. But overall, for Bazooka Puppies, they are still going to commit to this left side approach and not go for the extreme high grade. They need to be diving the back lines a lot more and being a lot more consistent with it. I mean, essentially that's the only one condition they have is if they bring down the supports of Misfits, but Misfits are playing extremely well. Look at this, Logic to the Pulse Bomb is going to be evening out the fight. Both the main tanks are going to be missing, both the Winston players are going to be missing, and off the back of that, you're missing your frontline tanker. Misfits are going to be in a much better position to try and pick off the remaining players. As you can already see, they get the D-Mech onto Mete. They're going to be staggering them out as well. Tavik just chooses to end the Baby Diva's life there and then. But it's such a difficult fight for Bazooka Puppies because they've only got a minute left CP and realistically no ultimates on the horizon. And the problem for them too is that they just fed a lot to Misfits, so their best chance here, Bren, they have to get an early pickoff to set themselves up. And that is the question. Can they actually do it? Because Misfits, they've got ults online. Transcendence, the Nana Boost, Swoosh even after the Primal Rage. They can stall this one out for days. It's almost looking like an impossibility for the side of Bazooka Puppies. But again, going from this left-hand approach, going to be doing it. It's a bit unorthodox. You don't really see it too often. But they need to pick their targets carefully. And they need to dive onto them effectively. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty rough. And already we see the Nana Boost. A bit of a tempo play being used onto Swoosh. It knocks Rubicon off. Rubicon isn't even in the fight anymore. He has to move around the other side. Both supports are not with the oh rest of their team. And oh, no. It's uh. like, oh, <laughs> just smushed into the corner. He got every bit of Winston in his face there. My goodness. I like how Psycho Wolver just gave up. He just stood there staring <laughs> at this giant nano boosted monkey. And if Rubicon falls here, I think we can safely claim that it's most likely going to be Curtains. The overtime kicks down to Vic using the Dragon Blade. will bring down the side of Ube. Takes him out. South Destruct going to be laying down the damage to try and clear them off to the point. The overtime still ticking down to a degree. But with the amount of players the Misfits have, it is pretty much going to be over. Misfits right now, they are on cleanup duty, and clean up they shall. Bazooka Puppies, unable to get a tick onto last. And now the victory condition for Misfits, rather clear indeed. Uh, a little bit more of what we expected from the previous two maps, I'd say. Coming out of Misfits now, definitely performing at the levels that we, we foresaw them to see, because... You know, when you completely deny a team with that second checkpoint, that's actually quite big, and it does show the sort of skill discrepancy between the two teams. But now we're going to see again, the roles are going to be switched over. Bazooka Puppies, if they want to be trying to take this map, they're going to have to work incredibly hard at it because they're going to have to completely stop them from even capping this first checkpoint. If it goes to a draw, if they let them cap that first checkpoint, it's still going to mean that they lose the series. So to that point, the best opportunity for Bazooka Puppies to grab a win here and keep their hopes alive within the series is to get 
a first point hold. In fact, given the tiebreaker situations, they have to get the first point yeah. hold. That, so that, that's the only way. Basically, what you're saying is we need to see the Orissa, we need to see the Torbjorn, we need to see the Symmetra. No. That's what needs to be coming out to play. Don't, don't become renegades. renegades Have are, more dignity. Renegades are the future of the Overwatch League ZP, and you will show them respect, okay? Uh, no. You will so, show them respect. I, I, I will rebel against the Torbjorn Orissa force. No, no, It's no. going to be the future. We're going to be seeing it. You know, Apex Season 4, Overwatch League. Uh, Everyone's going to be running Orissa. Everyone's going to be running Symmetra. It's going to happen. <laughs> This is the darkest He's on the timeline. Floor. He's, I can't <laughs> handle this. He's crying. But at the very least, Bazooka Puppies, they're, they're keeping it's the ray of hope alive. It's all Th good. Thank Don't you. worry. Thank Bazooka Puppies thank is going to be running a, a reasonably normal composition. Normal by our standards, at least. Uh, Misfits on the attack. Not going to be going with anything fancy. Again, traditional dive composition. Just the you know practicing the fundamentals that they've got available to them to really just overwhelm Bazooka Puppies. And what we saw of that first round, no surprises there because it's definitely doable for them. Bazooka Puppies are the real question mark because they've got to try and hold on to this first point, and it's 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 almost impossible against a team like Misfits. But if they manage to do it, it will create a hell of a storyline. It would be incredibly epic. So we'll see if they have what it takes. They are running a very divey defense though, which means that they need to rush in the Misfits early. You don't want to let Misfits just get in position here early, and that's what you're seeing from Bazooka Puppies. They're challenging them right at the archway. Ube though under pressure early on, he cannot fall. That would be terrible. He is able to get out. Now, we're not seeing any sort of maddening strategies by Bazooka Puppies, but tactically wise, they are playing very aggressively quite forward. But Logix has managed to work his way in through the point as he just zips his way through to the back lines. He spotted the back lines, and now that is the target. So you can see immediately deleted them off the map. Both the support's going to be falling, and off the back of that, it's most likely going to mean that Misfits are going to be taking this first checkpoint which means that they are ultimately also going to be winning the series. The question yep. is, can Bazooka Puppies now just hold them off for pride, if nothing else? Well, we will get that show one way or another, but the thing here for Bazooka Puppies in this defense is that while a dive defense can buy you some time, it's very unlikely to hold and get that full first point hold relative to other heroes you can run. Not unprecedented, but I just don't think it's the best option to run when your only victory condition within the series is to complete the first point hold. Yeah. So, in any case, now we'll get to see if they have a little bit of pride here. I can still get a point on the board, which they would if they're holding off Misfits for a full six and a half minutes. Yeah, the question is, this is the difficulty because Misfits have got six and a half minutes to work on and they only have to get a single tick. That's the only thing they have to work towards. And the current superior alt advantage, you know, they've got the Transcendent Zebosai now has built up this sound barrier. The DMEC on Mete will actually set this up very nicely as they look to lead it in. And now Logic's creeping from the side. He's deadly. The Pulse Bomb is in. The support is down. Rubicon out of the fight. He's not done yet. The Ana in his sights right now. Looking for more. Down goes Psycho Waffle. And the support backline for the Bazooka Puppies has been decimated. At this point, it is pretty much all over. It's done. It's dusted. Misfit's going to be taking map number three in a very convincing fashion indeed. And Oof. we're going to be leading into map number four. Again, that'll be Bazooka Puppies' pick. But... I mean, that is the Misfits that we have known to ex and come to expect, I suppose, from, from Contenders Season 1, at least, and definitely showing why they are the number one seeds. No real surprises here. Bren, if you had just shot me through time and space and made me ignore the first two maps, this map here on Hanamura is what I would have expected from the series yeah. and what we saw earlier on. So this was more Misfits returning the form but also a bit of a weaker showing for Bazooka Puppies as well relative to what we saw in the first half. Yeah, I, they, they showed from the first two maps that they had potential. That's the, the real key to me. And, you know, the analysts can make all the arguments they want about them potentially, you know, underperforming, you know, from the side of Misfits, trying to play a bit cerebral was the word that Saichu used. Um, but ultimately, you know, Misfits coming out on top as we all expected. All right, so does Bazooka Puppy still have a little bit of fight left in them? We will find out after the break as we go to map number four.
Welcome back to Overwatch Contenders Season 1 EU. I'm ZP, still joined here by Bren. And we are heading to Watchpoint Gibraltar, the sea. What will happen in map number four between this epic match of puppies versus rabbits? It has been relatively epic. I think epic is a bit of an overused word, you know, but I, I would say <laughs> it's on a it's it's on an okay level, you know. Misfits have been performing well. Bazooka puppies have been performing better than expected. We could see some surprise upsets coming out from Gibraltar. Who knows? You know, these teams are a little bit uh, a little bit odd at the moment. But map number four is what we're going to be heading into. Gibraltar is the map. Apparently, it's some sort of underground lake in Kansas City. Is that the explanation that you gave ZP earlier? Yes. It is. And it also, they have their own sun down there. They have powered yep. fusion underneath the Earth. It actually works. How come I'm only just hearing about this now? Well, I mean, you're from the UK. Everyone in the US knows this. Uh, Kansas is a scenic location to visit. Is it? Is that true? You're looking at me with these these eyes that just tell me deceits, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, why would I ever lie to you, Bren? I, mate, I don't know America. You know, Colorado has been lovely, but Kansas City, I don't know. No, no, not Kansas City. Kansas City is in Missouri. Okay. Apologize. Not in Kansas. What? Believe. Yes, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. What is going on? I feel worse than when Sideshow thought there were 65 states in the U.S. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling right now. You would think that Kansas City would be in Kansas, but no, no, no. Why, why would you ever crazy. name that? Regardless, we have Overwatch to talk about as EP. As much as I'd love to talk to you about American <laughs> geography and the intricacies of why your naming conventions are quite odd, we're going to talk instead about the compositions <laughs> here of Misfits and Bazooka Puppies, which is Misfits on the defense. They're going to be running... Again, it's a, it's a bit of a mix-up because in the past, you know, oh, no, never mind. I thought Lodge was going to be sticking to the Genji. Uh, instead, I'm going to be sticking to the Tracer. So a double hit scan dive composition with Zupe on the Ana. Understandably, you run Ana on this uh, Gibraltar first defense because you've got a lot of high ground. You can just sit quite nicely, lay down the heels, and it forces Bazooka Puppies to take the initiative and, and really climb that high ground. And the thing for Misfits, too, is that they are still running the Lucio here in the defense. So they have the ability to disengage. Whew, disengage they need to as Bazooka Puppies coming in hot early. On. Okay, he's switching. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, what is going on here? Like, he's switching. Brilliant. <laughs> Psycho Waffle playing Brain the Widowmaker. <laughs> what in God's green earth? But no, he switches back to his true role. The role his team's like, get back on Lucio. We want to win this game. Get out of it. But I don't want to skate. <laughs> well, in any case, uh, Tavik was able to find Ube there early on. Bazooka Puppies actually getting contested rather heavily here by Misfits in the beginning of Gibraltar. Misfits not giving an inch, certainly not giving a mile. And so far, this aggressive defense, uh, reminiscent of Rogue in their prime, yep. pretty useful here so far. It is, but that is going to mean that the back line is going to be jumped on to a degree. But Zupe is happy. Sleep Dark comes out onto Mete, going to be forcing them out into the mech as well. And still, Misfits not even losing a single player. Uh, Ube tries to even it out. Just as I say, that logics will fall. But again, you lost your Tracer player, and you can literally just get straight back into the fight within five seconds almost. Let's, let's count it down. Five, right. four, four. Three, Hello. two, one. one. Uh, Close enough. He's there. He's yeah, near yeah, enough. Fine, he's in the fine. fight. Don't worry about it. He'll guys. be in the next fight. It's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and now you take a look at this next fight. Swoosh has the Primal Rage up. We're near some edges here. Some people could go flying. Swoosh would love to add a little bit of a boop to the highlight reel. Get on the boop of the week. Or just die oh, because dead. he doesn't hit Primal Rage and die, you know? <laughs> Both extremes. Why not? So, this fits. They're going to have to back out here in a hurry. And that's what they're doing. They want to make sure they get at least one more good fight. But Zupe gets staggered. Yeah, Zupe getting staggered out there. I believe they thought he could survive. But Zupe Puppies, you know, Meza ended up committing the Primal Rage at the tail end of that. And the cart will slowly move forward. I imagine that's just Psycho Waffle on cart duty right now, just pushing it forward for the time being. And they have actually managed to take up a defensive positioning on the high ground. So Bazooka Puppies are actually in a decent position now to contest this next fight. But Misfits have six ults to use. Chances are they're going to be able to win this next engagement. All right, Transcendence up here from Bazooka Puppies as they look for a way in. They're trying to claim the high ground. Ube with the blade looking for targets and finally does find one. Zube going to fall. Wow. So Zebo, both supports. Their lives have ended. And Bazooka Puppies in a good spot here, even as Tavik is peppering them from above. Uh, it was looking pretty good. Ube almost turned this one around. The sandbar as well, pretty late. Biotic Field will not save you in midair, lads. So Tavik is going to be falling as well. And right now, still fighting to the bitter end. Bazooka Puppies are going to be hopefully able to clean this one out. Still, Zupe is alive and kicking. He has the help of his team as well. Sleep Dart can be sent out. Unfortunately, woke up immediately after. Uh, but is this still defendable right now? They're staggering us out to a degree, and Misfits are getting the respawns in, but Bazooka Bubby's off the back of those kills. They should be able to secure this one, surely, ZP. 
You would think. Yeah, totally. they have, they're down to their final two people. Logix is one of those two people, and he's just oh my goodness. Oh no. Is, if this, is this happening? Turns, is this happening? It actually might, because the players what? are coming back in from Misfits. What? They've still got Zebesai. Zebesai, the last one standing. It's moving in. All the right. car. Okay. Ooh. They got it. Uh, no sweat. Uh, no, there's sweat. Like, I'm drenched right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that was far too close for comfort there because it was good stuff from Misfits, but it should have been and was a cap for Bazooka Puppies, but. Oh man, there, there's an alternate universe somewhere where we're just beside ourselves with confusion where Misfits could have helped. There's an alternate universe where Bazooka Puppies are currently two maps up right now, you know? Yes. And uh, this is an incredibly close series. It's still not to say that it's not a close series right now, it's just a little bit less close, you know, than if it was a few more maps. But Bazooka Puppies are leading it in with a few kills here and there and everywhere. Zebesai will fall. And the question is, ZP, how much can you wrap? Could you rap me a song right now to the tune of these deaths? So I could rap, but Golden Boy's brain would just leak out of his head because <laughs> of how bad it would be. I would offend him. No, I'd pay to see this. <laughs> no, no. Can we? Can we? Can I, can I we, love Alex. I'm not doing that. Can we get him. production to drop you a beat? Can we just lay down some tunes? To just let... I, I'd like him to live. <laughs> Anyways, on the this. payload right now, we do have Shark. Trying to put Bazooka Puppies over and does stagger two kills. Swoosh, caught between a diva and a hard place indeed. And Bazooka Puppies just slowly picking Misfits apart and they've actually given themselves some very nice momentum here. And now you think about the next fight. The Transcendence is up. Yeah. And that's a great way to deal with Zupe's incoming nano boost. Yeah, not only the Transcendence, but also the Sand Barrier. Psycho Waffle very close to this one here. Ube almost brings down Logix. Logix was hiding in the corridor. Shuriken's not quite going to be kicking off here. We're going to see as well. Now the ultimate's going to be committed. Swoosh with the Primal Rage going to be trying to lead this one out, but a lot of ults being used. Now staggering up the Sandbar going to be used by Zebesai. Misfits trying to stay in this fight. The South Destruct will force the positioning of Bazooka Puppies back, but they immediately answer back with a few more kills. Bazooka Puppy still very much in this. The barrier is in. Ube, very close to the blade, which might be necessary here for cleanup. Misfits still staggering in, but they are low. Everyone is in a rough shape. And Ube, that's why he's holding on to the blade right now. You're not worthy of the Dream Crusher, he says. They're not worthy. No, they're not worthy. Nobody's worthy. Apart from Zebesai, he seems to be giving him a bit of trouble, but it comes in now, second point. The question is, ZP, what would your rap album really be called? Rank doesn't matter? Uh, let me think here. Give me right, not right, I can suggest that, some that's excellent already taken names. by someone else, okay? <laughs> well, Someone's make a, made a uh, rap album called Tor Tor Rank in the Doesn't Matter. T Torbjorn's in the body. Torbjorn's <laughs> in the body would be your rap name. <laughs> yes. Or your rap album name. Yes. What would be your rap name, your stage name? Oh, man, I, I don't even know. I, again, I could kill Alex by even just <laughs> guessing about this stuff. So, <laughs> look at this next fight. Bazooka Puppies, they're still challenging this pretty well. Ube, he's in with the blade. Brilliant stuff already. Swips it out. Going to be looking for the kills. Does a decent amount of damage down to Swoosh. Brings him down to a sliver of HP and finally takes him out. Now, Manhattan is all up to him to really try and stall this. And meanwhile, ZP, while I've been trying to derail this conversation <laughs> with rap topics, Bazooka Puppies are actually getting a relatively decent time. They are. They're dead. They have two minutes left. This is reasonable. Misfits doesn't have a whole lot to contest here, nor does Bazooka Puppies, but they have the power of positioning. They can take this fight the way they want to. Misfits, they have to just struggle to get out of their spawn. Now, the fight is taking place on the payload. Ube, we might see him on the 76 soon if this push doesn't work. And Bazooka Puppy's actually getting pushed back a bit, but they do have the Transcendence in Reserve, and ooh, it comes out too late to save Meza. Yeah, using that Transcendence there, they do end up losing their main tank, but still keeping them alive. The Pulse Bomb as well from Sharp will actually end Susha's life in the end of it. The South Destruct not really going to be doing a lot here, but Misfits have staggered this one out. They have the superior player advantage, and now they're just looking to run down the remaining players of Bazooka Puppies. All right, so Bazooka Puppies are going to have to regroup here. And now for Ube, he's faced with an interesting situation. Does he go to the 76 here or just go for the next Dragon Blade? And I think he's close enough that he's going to go for the Blade. He wants to just clean out Misfits, but Bren, Misfits has reestablished pretty heavily here. Bazooka Puppies no longer has an easy road to that yellow box of victory. Oh, only a minute left. Meza is currently just trying to role play as a secret agent, but quite not working out for them. The Samurai is going to be exchanged by both these teams as the Tactical Advisor was used by Tavik, forcing that out from them. Now we see Ube with the Dragon Blade looking for the kills. Logix will recall himself out of there. Ube is desperately searching <laughs> for the targets, but he can't quite connect onto the British Time Traveler, but still, the kills flowing in for Bazooka Puppies right now. They have ults to work with as well. They might actually gonna be get able to get this now. They've got a South Destruct, they've got a Primal Rage. Their ball is in their core. That was a gigantic team fight win. This Zevo just gets smushed Ooh. again in over the top. Bazooka Puppies with 20 seconds left remaining. 
take a tough team fight at the end where Misfits had a bit of an edge and they were able to turn it to their favor. Not quite the engage Misfits was looking for and hey, well played by Bazooka Puppies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, completing the map against Misfits, you know, it, this was at the end of the day Bazooka Puppies map pick and as we see, there is a pause, which most likely means you're going to be seeing our ugly faces for quite a bit of time, unfortunately, for yourselves. But that was uh, 20 seconds on the board for Bazooka Puppies. Not bad. Not bad by any means. You know, what do we really expect to see out of this? Do we, do we, do we foresee some weird compositions to try and hold them here? Or? I think for Bazooka Puppies, they've been playing well with their standard comps here. I think for now, it seems to be working. Do yeah. what you do best and let Sharp run wild. Okay, so if I was to challenge you, ZP, um, and your suit jacket's on the line, you need to come up with a rap line. You're breathing in deeply. You're preparing for this mentally, I can I, tell. I, I, it's also part scared. I mean, I, I value You need my to come jacket. up with a rap around Overwatch with these two teams. How do you do it? How do you compose this? Oh, you know, I think I'd have to go, I'd really have to orient the lyrics around like puppies and rabbits, their epic yeah. struggle. And go from there. And then, you know, talk about how they play with knives and how one is just really sharp. Okay. Okay. I feel it. You could, so you're getting back down to the streets level? Sure. I see it. I see it. Okay. So it should be a quick pause. I mean, the players <laughs> are at least saying it's going to be a quick pause. So you don't have to listen to us talk about ZP's theoretical <laughs> rap music <laughs> you know, for much longer. I, I think I just heard, like, a just wail of pain from the back like even just the part where we're getting to the idea <laughs> that I could be dropping sick beats is causing pain the to our is, close friends they're all <laughs> sat in the greeter right now just thinking oh my goodness get this get this <laughs> get us out of here get them out no you're our hostages back there guys like I'm actually looking directly into the green room you have to listen to this they do indeed but uh, we're going to be heading to the desk temporarily and they can break down what we've seen so far while we wait for the, the players to just get back into the lobby all right, thank you very much, friends. It's time to educate our Europeans. We have two here on the desk and one very lost European standing next to ZP. Do you guys know where Kansas is? Kansas? Yes. Uh, somewhere in the U.S., I think. Somewhere. Uh, <laughs> it sounds pretty Texas-like. Sounds Texas-like. <laughs> Do you know what, though? I, I know there's a place called Arkansas that you oh, more or less pronounce Arkansas for some oh, reason. Oh, wow. yes. well, this is the beauty of uh, Kansas right here. I just thought I'd, we would educate Brent especially and, and apparently uh, you gentlemen as well. Mm. It's like a city without buildings. Wow. Yeah, or people <laughs> or animals. It's uh, just grass. Lots of grass. It's oh, a fa yeah. fantastic state. Also, uh, we do have Reverend Gil for us to teach uh, Bren, real quick, who is the prodigal son? So we, we need to talk about the prodigal son because I think the word you're thinking of is prodigy there, Bren, <laughs> and I'm only bringing this up because you were trashing on the desk earlier and so tit for tat. Um, so this is a story, of course, of a, a young boy who leaves his loving father to go off and do, quite honestly, a lot of fun stuff. Is a that lot what Shop did? Debauchery and all that stuff. I don't think Shop did that. I don't think so. No. He doesn't seem to be having terribly much Shop's fun. Because good and young, and so that would be prodigy. That, that's a prodigy. prodigy. I'm told the game is, is ready, for, so yeah. we don't have to talk about Kansas or the Bible anymore. Let's go back to video games. Take it away, ZP. <laughs> We are back here to talk about Kansas and the Bible. Wait, yeah. no, we're not. We're actually about to get back into the game. I mean, we can talk about it if you want, but we're no. going to be getting into the game pretty uh, shortly. Uh, so I, I, I'm very uneducated. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be moving into it. It's Bazooka Buppies versus Misfits. As you've all come to expect, you know, the scoreline, pretty much uh, uh, something that we're really expecting from this one. But now the question is, what compositions are they going to be switching? Because now Bazooka Buppies is going to be on the, uh, on the defense, Misfits on the attack. And now... This composition, I mean, Misfits are teasing with some picks here, but they might just go with a tried and tested dive composition. Bazooka Puppies, again, also going to be sticking with this dive composition, but Rubicon is going to be on that Ana. All right, and for Bazooka Puppies, this is a more measured approach. They're not going for, like, the Zen Ana where they really want to hold their ground. Yep. They leave themselves options to disengage or engage heavily if they see an opportunity, and they are running Tracer Genji, right? So this is where you would have to expect that this comes down to engage versus counter engage, where if they can get onto Misfits before Misfits can find their ideal opportunity, it's good. I mean, they're both running dive comps powered by Genji Tracer. Uh, I mean, we're in a situation. Do you remember there was a time in Overwatch history, ZP, when we used to saw, see Torbjorn on this first defense here on the side of Gibraltar? Are you aware of this? Uh, I remember Torb. Torb, uh, there was a era in Overwatch where not only did you see him on first point for, say, King's Row, Hollywood, but teams wouldn't try and run him here. I mean, there was a point where everyone wanted to really play Lego in Overwatch and yeah. build those turrets and just crush people with highly ejected pieces of building blocks. Did you know 
that uh, reinforces uncle is called Torbjorn. I did not know that. Yeah, and he's actually, he's not a dwarf. He is, uh, he's like six foot six. So I, I, I was going to say, if it's Torbjorn, <laughs> like reinforce. But he, he is an he engineer. Got... He is an engineer. Yeah. I know that much. Yeah. I was just going to say, he got his hype from somewhere else, but we are getting <laughs> into it here early on. Misfits countering dive for dive, and they find Sharp in the yeah. beginning. And that's tough, given how much bazooka puppies have relied on Sharp to really open things up here. So Misfits with a keen edge as they take down the first three. I mean, realistically now, it's looking pretty solid right now for Misfits. They're picking up the players at the back of it. Mete will get demeked as well as his cart starts to get pushed in round through the car wash area just here. And I mean, right now, time on the board. Misfits not really slowing down. In fact, not losing any players, I feel like, in that fight as it happened. Still, it's even on the ultimate front. You know, both teams have reasonably equal ultimate economies. And it will be, again, a question of raw mechanical skill when it comes into this next team fight. All right, and Misfit so far, they have been proven to have better engages in these dive setups. Zuka Puppy is looking for a way in. They already take heavy poke damage early on. Ube has to find a way to get healed before he can really assist Sharp in the back. And Sharp is able to rewind just in time, but Ube course no rewind he's taken down by swoosh and bazooka puppy is now on the back foot as misfits as you mentioned brent raw mechanical skill leading the way y'all here are gonna make me lose my mind <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe you just busted that out my god i couldn't tell the difference am i casting with dmx what is this in another life i look i had <laughs> Significant plastic surgery, uh, oh, really, re re <laughs> I don't even... That's, that's so, uh, it's so ZP, but it's so not ZP <laughs> at the same time. Wow. And meanwhile, Misfits, they won the team fight. You know, I don't even care about that because ZP's <laughs> rapping all over the place right now. But Misfits, uh, they've got ults online. They've got two defensive support ults. They've got to pick with a Dragon Blade. But Super Puppies need to play this carefully. The Vic might not even need this own Dragon Blade. He's going to wait for the Sand Barrier to really expel. They're down Meza early on, but Bazooka Puppies, they need to decide to take a stand or not, but they lose too many people. They can't fight power for power, and now their only chance at holding on second here is going to be to regroup and rush out those doors with Nano Blade. But this one still has options here. They didn't actually have to use that much. They can still drop a barrier. Mission Impossible music, you should start playing right now for Ube because you have a tough road ahead. They literally just used the Transcendence and that was all they used to win that next team fight. And already Meza tried to initiate in with his own Primal Rage. We see the Nano Blade going to be used as well by Bazooka Puppies. Ube in the back lines has already picked up two kills. Going to get the third. He's already down to a sliver of HP and will eventually be brought down in the midst of it still. Bazooka Puppies looking to hold this on sharp. The Pulse Bomb will actually bring down Swoosh, the main tank gone now from the Misfits lineup. Valiant effort there from Ube, but as we're learning, he might not actually be tough. Tom Cruise says, well, actually, no, it's going back around. He's done his duty. He was a martyr, but Bazooka Puppies is able to pull this back around. It was enough to give them some stability here. Misfits, they're going to have to regroup here on this attack. And even though it wouldn't win them series, is there a hope that Bazooka Puppies could take a map away from the Misfits? They could. Uh, the, the potential is there, you know. With Bazooka Puppies managing to get this defense, yes, they don't have any ultimates to use, but at the end of the day, neither do Misfits apart from Tavik with the Dragon Blade. Logix is looking for this Pulse Bomb, not going to be working out, and Sharp gets brought down. Misfits, they got an opening. Tavik with the Dragon Blade slices through Psycho Waffle, and he will be brought to a bitter end. Ube might not be actually next, and DT is, and that will be the capture point. Four and a half minutes here, ZP, as they're pushing this one steadily in. So for Bazooka Puppies, they really do have to buy time here on last. If you give Misfits over four minutes to just run their next attack, the odds that you have an attack that can even remotely deal with that, not very good at all. So this is do or die here for Bazooka Puppies. A very defensible stretch here for the defense where you have put good line of sight and good quarters. But, oh, Sharp just got wrecked. The orbs right to the face. And now Misfits, a golden opportunity to set a very quick time. That's some tasty stuff right there. Ooh. Right now, this it, time it gives is being some fiber, set. Man. But we see Nanaboost, Rubicon going to be utilizing this onto Ube. But Ube gets destroyed. <laughs> he had a Dragon Blade, but didn't opt to use it. He had no support ults to really back him up. A Psycho Waffle is 99% away, but he gets brought down by the Helix Rockets off to Vic. Now Logix with the Pulse Woman in hand. Most likely going to be committing this for the D-Mech here onto Mete. Doesn't even need it. He's just going to be beating him down. Lays down the bomb as well. Doesn't find the kill. Bit of a missed time by Logic, but that doesn't matter. He's got good aim. All right, late Dragon Blade here from Ube. Can he be a hero here once more? Buy them some time. He gets Zupe, but under such pressure, you have Tracer and Diva on both ends and rip to Ube. Gonna get taken down there as Misfits is 1.88 meters away, and they're gonna double down. There's the beat. 
can Bazooka Puppies even fight back? No pressure on Tavik into the back lines means that he's just got free range right now. It is quite literally a target-rich environment as he is just slamming into the back lines. But Bazooka Puppies are turning this one around. Psycho Waffle makes a last-minute Bastion switch outside the spawn to try and push them off. And he does succeed for the time being. Now the question is, ZP, is he going to stick on this Bastion when he's 70% towards his ultimate? God, I hope so. But something that's worth noting there is that Misfits dropped the barrier, and even though it hit multiple members, they were still wounded and off uh, kilter to the point that they still backed out. So that barrier was really rough from Zebosai, and now he's given Bazooka Puppies more life, where Bastion, I love you, you still beautiful robot, with it. you're still here! I don't believe that he's still stuck with this because all Misfits need to do is jump on him and bring him down. Like, oh, look no. at that Pulse Bomb straight into the back lines and Psycho was gone. The Bastion Strat is dead in the water, ladies and gentlemen. He's looking for more kills. They're going to be rolling in with them right now as Misfits, they've already picked up a couple of them. Mete will equalize it out as Swoosh gets brought down, but he's out of the mech now and it is looking dangerous. Ube, another Dragon Blade. Will it be enough for him? Not quite. No. Tavik is ready to bring that man down and out and... Here you have it, almost three minutes on the clock here for Misfits compared to Bazooka Puppies 1. Uh, yeah, I mean, stranger things have happened, you know? Stranger mm. things have happened. I mean, I saw the Rogue Immortals clip of Gibraltar. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, anything can happen. It's contenders, ladies and gentlemen. It's contenders. I mean, if we could just get four people using their dashes to get off the payload at the same time, <laughs> I, please, just make my day. Like, don't be one up. D don't let your memes be dreams, but uh, yeah. And he's uh, really been uh, performing with some of these clown clips, you know. They have been turning up with some of these, some of these clown plays. I gotta say, you big know, fan. I will say, though, that despite IMT's best efforts there, it's still called a C9 by popular uh, decree. Yeah. It, ha it hasn't transformed to IMT. They're trying to really get that Immortals brand going, you know? That's the, well, that's the game plan. C9 gets so much free publicity there where people like to see it. It's like, why are you saying C9? What is C9? You know? I believe you should call them the London Spitfires, actually. The London Spitfires. Yeah. That's going to be a that, sick that, name. That, that would be a, be a sick name. name. Yeah. I like the London Spitfires. All right. So, Misfits, they will be on the defense here once more. Bazooka Puppies. They have one minute of destiny here, Bren, where we'll see just how far they can get this payload. We've seen some crazy stuff with teams in this position, but they will have to shell shock Misfits and win fight after fight if they want yeah. to deal with this two minute and 47 second time. Now you've really hyped me up now, ZP, calling it the minute of destiny. That's <laughs> like, that's high praise right now. Bazooka Puppies, they got a lot to work with. This minute of destiny, they got to let, they got to get it stretched out. They got to really work their magic off the back of it because you are correct, though. It's entirely the destiny of the, of this game in our hands with this single uh, minute. But losing Psycho Waffle, I mean, it, right now, it is, it's not looking great. The minute of destiny is is, is gone. It's, it's dead. The dream is dead. Maybe destiny, fate, these things don't exist when you lose your Lucio <laughs> early on. So Bazooka Puppies are still able to apply pressure here, but you notice they can't really dive in. They're not getting as much healing here. I mean, it's just the Zen that's healing. It takes a while for Orb to heal it up. Psycho Waffle, though back into the fight, and now they're going to try and apply more pressure, but they're still really low, mm. which means they don't have the power they need to really dive into Misfits here just yet. However, the healing has come in, and now you might see Ube take to the skies. And Ube, yeah, he almost has this Dragon Blade. He's very close to it, but we're going to see the Nana Boost used by Zupe. It's going to be that sort of economy push here, where we see the Nana Boost going to be used on the Winston, and if you've got nothing to deal with it, it, it can be destructive. The ultimates are overwhelming right now. Misfits are just claiming every single clear off the back of this one. Tavik's Tactical Visor is slamming this one home and the overtime is going to burn down to a crisp and they don't even manage to get it underneath the car wash. That is that is a little bit depressing. You know, it, it is depressing when your destiny is only the push of payload 38.3 <laughs> meters. That, that That's a tough destiny. You know, not everyone gets to go for glory. You're putting a lot of emphasis on this one minute. You know, the destiny minute. Yeah. Minute of destiny. 38.16. 38.18. <laughs> 0.18 meters is the is the distance that Bazooka Puppies managed to push it. I'm blind. It's fine. You're blind. It's, no, yeah. it's all good. You know, we both wear glasses. You know, we're, we're going to be correct some of the time. You know, oh. that's what I blame uh, whenever I mispronounce player names. I just blame it on the fact that I need glasses. Brent, that's the kindest thing you've ever said to me, where you've equated our glasses as being remotely equivalent. You could take off your glasses and still <laughs> live a life 300 years ago. I could take off my glasses and just get eaten by a bear in like five yep. seconds. You'd, you'd be convinced the bear was a tree or some sort of bush, most likely. I, I would actually just think it was yogurt. I mean, I've, tr <laughs> I've, not, I've tried your glasses on ZP, and it, they are it's a, it's a whole other world in itself, you know? You put them on, and you just world. view it, everything in a different light, quite literally, because I just can't see. But uh, Misfits, 
are going to be now on the attack. Uh, I mean, the ultimate disrespect here would be running a cheese composition like they're currently teasing with. P please. Something tells me they won't do that because that is disrespectful by the very definition. Uh, uh, you think they just, they won't have a little bit of fun with this? I, I would. Swoosh on please. the Orisa. No, 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 no. There you go. Tavik will stay on the Hanzo temporarily just to send in the Sonic Arrow most likely, just to see if they've got anybody waiting around the corner. Indeed. Zuka puppies do not, but it's not a huge you know, distance that the Misfits really need to push this in now. It's not going to be a difficult task for them, and as soon as they get the entry pick, it's most likely going to be working in their favor. Well, they are almost the yellow box of victory three seconds in, so this is a good opening here to begin with. Bazooka puppies, they have to be perfect, and they are just getting poked out on all ends. Ube, lucky to get back with his life, and they're going to take shelter at the car wash here, the world's least friendly car wash. They try and kill you when you go through it. I mean, this is low ground right now that Bazooka puppies are fighting in. So they can just happily sit at the high ground, build up a dragon blade. They got plenty of time to work with Logics. The pulse bomb sends it in, brings down Sharp. The beat was dropped, but unfortunately did not connect onto Sharp in time. Well, Misfits right now applying more pressure. The barrier is in. They just want to dominate space here and dominate they do. They're dealing with the nano boost with Winston, but it doesn't matter. They mark him down. They take him out and a huge advantage of Misfits here as they simply punch that payload right in. Yeah, pretty standard stuff all around. I think it was sort of the expectation everyone was having there for Misfits, but GG's will be called and uh, this is going to be taking this series, you know, a big 4-0. I think the analyst desk is going to be happy with that one. Bit of a free win under their belt. Yeah, free win and even though you have to think that they were a little bit stressed the way oh, they yeah. started out. Where yeah. Zuka Puppies, to their credit, especially in the first half, they looked a lot better than we would have thought. We've been giving them a lot of uh, a lot of stick for their performance throughout this tournament, but they are, have genuinely stepped it up in this game against Misfits. The first two maps in particular were really quite impressive. You know, Bazooka Puppies played at a level that a lot of teams, I think, would say, you know, they could be quite proud of against a team like Misfits that we constantly talk up as the best team in Europe right now. All right, guys. Well, that was a pretty epic series for all sorts of reasons. But now we're going to throw it to the desk where Puckett is going to drop.